Hello again. This is the first in a series of screencasts walking you through setting up security and also user management for your app. And we'll explain, I will explain what uh, I mean by those things as we go on. The purpose of this first screencast is just to make sure you have an example you can work with in uh, the remaining sc uh, screencasts. If you plan to follow along, you probably want to just take a quick look and see if you're all set up the way we need to be here. So the first thing I'm going to do is open the app I'm going to be working with. It is the brewery app we've been using in the past. I'm doing this by going into workspaces, by opening up uh, Mendix Modeler. I'm going to be using version 7 19.0, which will be important because we're going to be um, ha having you import a module. So if you haven't yet, you want to get uh, upgraded to that version. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this from the menu here. I'm going to do File in Desktop Modeler. I'm going to do Open Project, uh, Mendix Team Server. If you need to, you can hit a quick refresh to make sure Mendix desktop modeler has all of your projects and then if you click here go find the one you're working with I have several versions of brewery I'm going to use brewery 2 here and once you choose that in this it will detect if you already have it downloaded what you want to double check is that the path includes your username and not image builder um, just to make sure this is in the right place so I'm going to go ahead and click OK to open this and now what I'm going to do is go under my first module domain model and you don't need to set this up exactly as I have here what we want to do is make sure we have at least a couple of entities the plan will be that all users can view and edit the beer entity uh, but when it comes to actually editing the list of styles Pilsners and so forth. We're only going to let our, our brewers, our experts, do that. Um, maybe we wouldn't do that in the real world in practice, but this is going to allow us to show that different users have different levels of access. If you don't have style set up, you can um, go ahead and use venue. Uh, maybe it's a little unrealistic to say that only brewers would edit the list of breweries, but you can go with that. This is just practice. The important thing is whatever entities you have in mind, you have some corresponding pages. So you'll notice over here we have beer list and beer info, which is going to let us edit the beer uh, pages. Um, and we also have um, style info and style list, or if you will, venue info and venue list. So just make sure you have that set up. Uh, the thing we also want to make sure is let's go under the project here to navigation I want to make sure that my menu includes a page for each of these examples so I have a page for beers I have a page for styles I've also added a page for administering users let me just make sure to show you how that works um, so I'm going to delete that for now we want to have a page that is administrator only and you'll see what I mean there it's only going to be the administrators who are allowed to um, add users to the system in this first version of our, our app so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add a new item I'm going to call it user admin user uh, user management and the icon you can leave it blank but I'm gonna go and put a user here and on click what I want to do is show a page and the page I want to show is under App Store modules administration user management admin account overview if you want to get there right away instead of drilling down you could just type account and you'll see it here account overview so we double click um, and there we go so now what I have is I have some menu choices that I'll be able to control and limit according to who's logged in 
And that's all you should need to do here. Make sure you have no errors. Um, we don't really have to run the app yet. You can if you want. But at this point, we should be ready to go.